August 15th, year 2000, Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting. First item on the agenda is the review and approval of the minutes of the previous meeting of July 18th, year 2000. Are there any comments or questions from board members? Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, David. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous meeting of July 18th, the year 2000. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Before we get on to the correspondence, I'd like to note that there are two members missing this evening. They have been excused from this meeting because there is one item on the agenda and they have a conflict, a personal conflict with that item and therefore they are excused from this meeting. Correspondence received is the zoning news of June 2000, a letter to the town attorney in regards to open space zoning interpretation, a planning commissioner's journal for the, the summer issue of the year 2000. On the podium this evening is a letter in regards to the Wellback Ridge subdivision from June Island and a butter, a letter from Michael McGovern concerning the conditional acceptance of roads and open space proposed at the Wellback Ridge subdivision and action by the town council and a letter from the planning commissioner's journal in regard to a regional conference. Also a letter addressed to Maureen O'Mara forwarded to the planning board in regards to the scout house application for the development of a restaurant at 1231 Shore Road. That land has now been sold And that so informs the board. Any comments regarding correspondence received this week? Questions of the planner? Hearing none, we'll move on to the only item of business on the agenda tonight under old business, the Wellback Ridge subdivision. Fitzpatrick Associates is requesting final subdivision review and a resource protection permit for the six lot Wellback Ridge subdivision located off of Old Ocean House Road. Section 16-2-4, Final Subdivision Review, and Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Permit. This application was granted preliminary subdivision approval at our July meeting. This is a major subdivision requiring a two-step subdivision approval process. The first part of the review, preliminary subdivision, Division review was completed by the planning board at the July meeting when preliminary subdivision approval was granted. The board is now asked to begin final subdivision review. Uh, just as reference to board members, the board can ask for changes to the subdivision plans, but final subdivision review is usually intended to be more of a fine tuning and wrapping up the legal details of the subdivision plan rather than beginning from scratch with the design of subdivision. If the applicant would like to begin to giving us an overview specifically of any changes from the last meeting? Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Owens McCullough, civil engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics here tonight on behalf of Fitzpatrick Associates. Uh, Joel Fitzpatrick and Kelly Fitzpatrick are also here tonight. Uh, we're here to ask the board to consider granting final plan approval for the uh, Wellback Ridge subdivision. Uh, since our last meeting at the preliminary plan, uh, we did make a follow-up submittal uh, to the town. That submittal uh, essentially went through um, the items in the town engineer's uh, review letter. It also uh, addressed some of the uh, staff review and items that are needed for final plan submittal. Uh, there really haven't been uh, any significant changes since the last meeting. Uh, the few changes that we did make included a fence, an eight-foot stockade fence. We show, we're showing it directly on the plan along the June Island property. Uh, we've also added uh, another loop trail in the open space B area. And as the board uh, uh, may recall at the preliminary meeting, there has been an agreement uh, between uh, Carlisle and Clegg and Joel Fitzpatrick so that the trail that was originally coming through the open space and over here to Ocean House Road uh, is now coming directly over to Route 77. Uh, I had an opportunity to walk it today with Maureen and Steve Harding, the town engineer, uh, to take a look at it. Um, I think it went uh, pretty well. 
Um, we talked about it. I think it's it's a workable solution. And uh, so we're here tonight to ask you to consider granting our, uh, final approval for the project. Uh, Maureen prepared a uh, staff report uh, on the project with some conditions of approval. Uh, we've gone through those conditions and are agreeable to those conditions of approval. In fact, we would uh, recommend to the board that maybe you add one additional condition. We talked about it a little bit with Maureen today. Um, and basically that uh, condition would re uh, read that moving the um, existing house, as you recall, by creating the road in through here, we create a setback violation on that existing house. And Joel Fitzpatrick is either going to need to modify that house um, or move it so that uh, we become in conformance with that 20-foot setback requirement. And uh, one additional condition we would ask is that maybe the board include that prior to the issuance of any certificate of occupancy for any of the proposed houses, that that uh, house would have to be moved or modified at, at that time. And that just sets sort of a time frame for everybody to uh, know when that house has to be modified or moved. And what we'd like to do is do it uh, prior to an issuance of a certificate of occupancy for, uh, for any of those lots. Uh, with that, we're here tonight to try to answer any questions the board may have and hopefully move forward with the project. Thank you. Questions from board members? Yes, Nancy? Uh, with the public access cause problems, uh, <clears throat> is selling the lots? Um, we've talked about that quite a bit. Um, and Joel, we've talked both from the standpoint of making it uh, private or public and, and looking at it, uh, Joel was more, he didn't think it would impact the subdivision and, and I think the town was more interested in having it as public access. And he is agreeable to that. Well, I, I wondered if it would make it difficult to sell the lots with the public going through. Uh, that is a concern for some people. Um, you know, there's going to be some people who would who would agree that uh, they don't want you know um, a trail behind their home. But there's a lot of people who would like the trail behind their home. So we have five lots here, and I'm sure that we can find five homeowners that would potential buyers that wouldn't would would actually like a trail in the open space behind their uh, home being public. So I'm not, you know, I'm not really worried about, uh, about that, to tell you the truth. Okay. If you're not worried, I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great booster of public trails, and I've gone on all of the trails in Cape Elizabeth, I believe. Um, where would the public park in this instance um, to take advantage of this walking trail? You envision people, not owners of the property, but other people from the Cape or, or greater Portland coming and using uh, this walk. We sort of viewed this trail as more of a link um, coming over to other trails. Right now, um, it would really be a sort of an isolated trail at this yeah. point, so it, it doesn't really have a lot of uh, draw to it other than probably the people that live in the subdivision for right now. But I, I think the goal would be that someday it would provide a link to the other trail systems, which most likely would begin from a public park or some sort of public area that people could park and use the, you know, follow the whole trail system. So we didn't really anticipate a lot of public coming in and parking to start their their hikes or their walks from this location. Um, I suppose if somebody wanted to, um, once this road becomes a town road, 
there is a hammerhead turnaround at the end of it. Um, it's for emergency vehicles, so uh, technically it's not dedicated parking. Parking. Um, so th there is no official parking provided for this, you know, for the for the trails, um, you know, as a point of origin uh, for somebody to start from here. But um, this trail, I really saw, uh, you know, it's more of a link. You know, to the rest of the trails, not necessarily a starting point. Well, it's awfully close to the lot. Um, even if it were linked up, it might be difficult to sell some of the lots. Um, the trail location it really done. might. Yeah. What we've done with the location of the trail is actually the location is flexible that it can be varied. Um, the goal was to um, have the Conservation Commission uh, work with the applicant in fine-tuning the exact location of the trail and it may be that they shift it a little bit from the back of lot two or three, I don't know, but um, the idea is to follow the best course. How long a trail do you figure it would be? Well, I didn't actually measure it, but um, this is about 350 feet from here, so I'm going to guess the trail might be double that, 700 to 1,000 feet in length, if you sort of go by how it is on the plan. Thanks. David? I have two questions. Um, the plans indicate that you're going to put a seat of fence on the left-hand side as you enter the road on the Iceland property. I'm curious as to the thinking on this. Is this something that will then be maintained uh, by somebody other than the property owner? Or is that to assume that the vegetation would eventually grow up enough so that the site protection for that property? The fencing, um, when we originally started the project, uh, we looked at um, a landscape buffer or fencing, and I believe Joel uh, met with June and talked about a fence or landscaping, and the preference was a fence. I don't want to... So the plan then was to add the fence about a foot off the property line on the development side of it for that entire length of, of property line and through there. As for the maintenance, um, Joel's trying to, you know, the goal is to use as, as maintenance free of a uh, fence as possible, but uh, when the road would become accepted, um, that fence would be within the town right away and would most likely be conveyed as part of the infrastructure. I had a question relative to the modification of the house on uh, lot number one. And I, I directed at Maureen because I don't know the answer. Is, is the terminology that he used adequate and acceptable at this point in town? Uh, you mean regarding when that work has to be done? Yes. In, well, that was pretty much what I dictated to him this afternoon when we were out there. <laughs> So that would be taken care of on the yeah, occupancy. That, I think the concern was um, not not that the work was actually going to be done, but that it be done at an appropriate time. Uh, the applicant's concern that he doesn't have to actually move the house until he's out there building the subdivision. And I talked to the code enforcement officer, and we thought that was a very reasonable way to do that. Uh, so we felt that if if he had to move that house at the same time he was building the other houses, that made the most logical uh, arrangement. So that's why the, it was tied to certificate of occupancy on the other homes. Okay. That's all. Question. John? <coughs> uh, yeah, along the same lines, I guess this is a question more for Joel in terms of the movement or the modification of the house. What, if it was modified, what, what sort of modifications are you talking about? It would probably most likely be shortened. It's, it's a long ranch right now. I believe it's about 85 feet long. So I could shorten it. I, that is 
really the least attractive option for me. We're gonna right now we're gonna have to move it. But I, I would like to, you know, the plan things change by the minute in this business and uh, I would like to have the option of either either way. But that but the modification you wouldn't you wouldn't redo the, the whole house or No, I I would shorten it somehow. No. And you remodel the interior to, to make it work. Right. But that would still be your moderate income house, correct? Right. right. Yes, correct. So I would assume that the modification, I mean, what I'm getting at is you're not going to completely rebuild it so that it's beyond the moderate income house. Right. In terms right. Of no, it's, it's going to be, uh, it, it was, it's going to stay a ranch. Okay. It just might be a little shorter. But my, my goal right now is to, is to move it. Thanks. I have a question of Father Fitzpatrick's stances. Uh, based on the information that's available at Maureen's office in regards to prices that determine whether a house is moderate income or not, uh, without holding you to a figure because market changes and the statistics used to come to this determination change, what do you anticipate the selling price to be of that moderate income house? Last year I had an appraisal done on it. Um, it was about 175, 180,000. Um, the limit, I believe, for moderate income, not low income, but moderate, is 203. And then there's some stipulations in there about um, the income for the buyer. Thank you. Further questions from the board? Before we can move on, we need a motion for completeness. Would you like to go through the checklist quickly? Green, would you like to help the board and just go through this by number? Or? Sure. Um, the only items I had identified was uh, 7A, Condition of Municipal Approval which is required when a project is going to be uh, donating, dedicating, or otherwise conveying facilities to the town. Uh, the applicant is proposed to donate open space and eventually a public road, and uh, he went to the planning, uh, excuse me, the town council last night, and the council did grant conditional municipal approval for that. Uh, the other item would be written dedication agreements. As part of this project, there are a variety of uh, written agreements which need to be put together one would be the deeds for the land. Another would be the affordable housing restrictions that would maintain the house as permanently affordable. Um, following the submission for this night's meeting, the applicant has submitted deeds for the open space. Um, they're, they're plain old warranty deeds. They don't say anything about permanently protecting the land as open space, and I've already talked to the applicant about needing to revise those deeds. Um, but something has been submitted uh, what I have suggested if the board is considering a motion for approval this evening is something that is not unusual whereby uh, we put a condition on the approval that states that deeds have to be submitted and they have to be approved by the town attorney uh, before the applicant can begin construction of the project. Are there any questions? What I assume then if those deeds proved adequate and acceptable that by the town, the, the conditional approval would be uh, eliminated it would be approval yeah the, the conditional approval is really kind of a, a midpoint check to make sure the planning board isn't moving in a direction that the council is ultimately going to object to so it's it's a convenient process check but it doesn't have a lot of weight so anything that the council uh, what, what basically the council did last night was nod and say yeah we're, we don't see anything that's going to raise a red flag for us but once those deeds are submitted in a final fashion and signed by the applicant, uh, once the road is constructed, that goes back to the council and they formally accept it. Would the board like to have a discussion of any conditions you'd like to place on completeness or incompleteness? John? Uh, just on the... One issue in Steve Harding's letter concerning the wooden walkway, um, where does that stand, the 
wetland area. Uh, we actually walked it today uh, with Steve Harding and Maureen. And uh, where we walked it in through here, um, there's a stream that comes through and we all sort of scratched our head because it actually disappears right in this area and then I, I guess reappears down here by the L.Y. Brook. But um, we wanted to walk it just to take a look at that whole thing today. And I think um, the decision was is that there's flexibility in the language within the uh, open space that it has to be constructed in coordination with them that if for some reason as we're going through it we had to build a walkway across the stream that that would be the applicant's responsibility. Well, who, Maureen, who makes that determination whether it's necessary? Well, or not? We usually put the trails on the plan because we want to make it clear that a trail needs to be built. Um, but the trails aren't really located. We're not sure that where they're going to be located because we don't want to put a trail through the middle of a large tree. The idea is that uh, once the applicant is getting ready to finish up the subdivision, uh, we did this. I did this twice in the last month with two different projects. Uh, we call the Conservation Commission and we go out there with the applicant and we decide where we want the trail. We actually hack through the brush, mark it, and wind it through and try to find uh, a location that's basically where we said we were going to put trails. We're not going through trees. We try to keep it on dry ground. And the idea was with this that when this project gets to that point, we would do the same thing. And um, our best assessment of what we saw this afternoon is there is a trail out there now that seems fairly passable. It's, it's a little squishy, but I think for most of the year it'll be just fine. If we were way off base out there, and in fact the place where the stream is is where we have to cross, we would make the applicant build some kind of boardwalk or bridge across that area. And there is a note right on the plan now that says that uh, the trail shall be field located in consultation with the Conservation Commission. So what Owens is referring to is we're saying that we're going to take that note and we're going to interpret it to give us a little bit of latitude to deal with whatever we find out in the field when we actually identify where it's going to be. Nancy? Who is responsible for the upkeep of a bridge if indeed it's built? Well, the trail, I'll let Maureen answer that one. The town is. It should be noted that historically there are numerous public service and nonprofit groups in the town of Cape Elizabeth that have been maintaining the trail system at this time. Uh, most active are the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Conservation Commission, and the Rotary Club. Maintenance of the trails have not been a costly item for the town to this date, including building of boardwalks and bridges. If there is no further discussion, we need a motion on completeness or incompleteness. I'll make a motion. Karen? Motion for completeness. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for final subdivision review and a resource protection permit for the proposed six-slot Whaleback Ridge subdivision located off Old Ocean House Road be deemed complete. Second. Seconded by Nancy. Is there further discussion or any conditions you wish to add? Maureen, I thought you had a condition you suggested to us earlier. Nope. That's not on completeness. Not on completeness, okay. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. It is a unanimous vote. We can move on to any discussions or motions you wish to make in regards to tabling this to our next meeting and scheduling of a public hearing. It's also an appropriate time if any board member feels the need to talk about an additional site walk now that we see the actual possible final plans. 
Um, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion. Thank you, Nancy. Go ahead. We have a public hearing. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for final subdivision review and a resource protection permit for the proposed six lot Whale Back Ridge subdivision located off Old Ocean House Road be tabled to the regular September 19, 2000 meeting of the Planning Board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, David. There has been a second. Open for discussion by board members at this time. Well, at the last uh, at the preliminary approval stage, if I'm not mistaken, we did have comments from the public, uh, fairly numerous. They addressed a lot of the issues. There aren't many changes from that preliminary approval to now that I can see. So uh, I guess unless I hear something that I don't know about, I don't see the need for further public hearing uh, on this. I believe it's a requirement of the application, is it not? It's, it's optional by the board. I guess I'd just like to say for the record that I support John's position on that um, for the reasons he stated. Um, I think they've done a great job addressing the comments raised in the other public hearings. Um, I'm satisfied they've responded adequately to the town engineer's um, written requests for modifications, and I also would support John's feeling that we don't require a second public hearing. Further comments? There is no further discussion. I'll call for a vote on the motion. Those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. We're going to have a split vote. Those opposed? <laughs> Three to two. Would someone like to amend the motion? Make a new motion. You can actually read the exist the previous motion and just drop lop off the last six or seven words if you like, David. motion? No, I'm simply asking for a motion to table it to the next scheduled meeting of the planning board. I'll make a motion to table. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for final subdivision review and resource protection permit for the proposed six-lot Whaleback Ridge subdivision located old, off Old House and House Road be tabled to the regular September 19th. 2000 meeting of the planning board. Is there a second? I guess I have a question for Maureen. Um, why would we want to table it? I don't know of any substantive outstanding issues that we're waiting for the applicant to come back and answer for us. Um, right now you've deemed the application complete. 
So you have a couple of different options. One is um, to table the item because you want to hold a public hearing next month or because you want to hold a site walk. Another reason would be to table the application because there are things on it that uh, you want changed or you want revised or you want submitted before you're willing to approve the plan. Uh, your third option would be to approve the project either with or without conditions. And your fourth option would be to take this time to deny the project uh, because you feel that it does not meet the standards of subdivision review. So I guess you have a lot of options. And that to answer your question, you would table, you could either table it right now since you've chosen not to hold a public hearing and I haven't heard any uh, great desire for a site walk. The reason you would table it would be because you want some changes made. Uh, I would suggest that if you're going to table it, that you provide the applicant with direction about what you want them to do between now and the September 19th meeting. Comments from the board? I guess there's a pending motion, but I, I would not support the motion to table it for the reasons I stated before. I think the plan was changed uh, in a very minor way, and there is an additional condition that was proposed that, that I would add. But other than that, I think all it would do would, would be to, to delay it until September for no particular reason. So. I wouldn't support uh, tabling it. If I don't hear a second, the motion dies. And then we can begin again. <laughs> Hearing no second, no action will be taken. And the chair waits for a further motion. All discussion, as Maureen just noted. Well, I'll make a motion for approval. Uh, findings of fact, uh, number one, Fitzpatrick Associates is requesting final subdivision review and a resource protection permit for the proposed six-lot Whaleback Ridge subdivision located off Old Ocean House Road, which requires review under Section 16 dash two dash four review and approval of major subdivision plans section nineteen dash eight dash three resource protection permit and open space <coughs> zoning section nineteen dash seven dash two two town engineers recommended minor revisions to the plans that will clarify construction of the subdivision three to comply with open space requirements, the applicant is offered to donate land to the town, which will remain as permanent open space. Four, a performance guarantee is required to assure that the subdivision will be built as depicted on the approved plans. Five, placement of Whaleback Ridge Road at the intersection of Old Ocean House Road and Trundy Road is a safer traffic design in creating a new curb cut slash intersection elsewhere on the same road and is consistent with past planning board decisions. Six, the application substantially complies with section 16-2-4, review and approval of major subdivision plans, section 19-8-3, resource protection permit, and open space zoning, section 19-7-2. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for final subdivision review a resource protection permit for the proposed six-lot Whaleback Ridge subdivision located off Old Ocean House Road be approved with the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised for the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated August 8, 2000. Two, the plans be revised to create a walking path on open space B, the location of which shall be field located in consultation with the Conservation Commission. Three, that the applicants submit deeds for the open space to the town planner in a form acceptable to the town attorney. Four, that the applicants submit to the town planner a performance guarantee in a form acceptable to the town attorney and the town manager and an amount acceptable to the town engineer. Five, 
that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit nor recording of the subdivision plat until the above conditions have been met. And then are we adding six more in regarding uh, um, the, the something along the lines that the modification to the existing home be completed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy? Well, I'll suggest then that, that modification or uh, moving the existing home to comply with uh, setback requirements be completed prior to any issuance of any certificate of occupancy for the remaining five lots. Thank you, John. Before we begin discussion, is there a second of that motion? I'll second. Thank you, Karen. There is a second. The motion is now open for discussion. Are there any further comments from the board? If not, I'm calling for a vote of the motion. Those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you to the applicant. Thank you. Nothing further on the agenda. The chair would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Thank you, Karen. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you.